Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be testing the FXT Mars Pro V2. Now, I'm towards I'm 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 the type of guy that really likes budget cameras because I have so many quadcopters, but when FXT said to send me their cameras, I said sure, I'll just do some latency testing and I don't know if I'll do any field testing because just it's very difficult right now with all the snow. So at that exact time when I received this, what happened was I had my Runcam Split 2S rip its ribbon cable and I needed a quick solution for my Zod Orbit in order to do the long range antenna testing which was uploaded a couple days ago or about a week ago or so. So throughout all that testing, the camera that was being used at the time was this one and that is why I didn't have any HD recording. But while using this, um, I found the image quality to be absolutely superb, like a lot better than the Runcam Split S. However, the only advantage with this one is I could record HD footage. So I'm having an, just a hard time saying, okay, do I still want just video, beautiful video feed for myself and basically be selfish? Or should I worry about the channel and make sure I get the HD footage without increasing the weight on my Zod Orbit? And um, I don't right now, to be honest, this was still in there. I just had to go take it out right now, even though I fixed that the run cam split to us. So in terms of quality, it was really nice. It was oversaturated or just I feel like it's just a little bit more saturated than normal, but it just gives really vibrant colors. And I really did enjoy it. However, the DVR is not going to really do it justice here. Uh, what you're going to see is we're going to see two images. We have one with the recorded with the Fat Shark HDO and the other one with the uh, Eosheen LCD. I'll have it on the screen. You can see that the Eosheen's DVR just looks a lot better for some reason. The colors are really captured into that DVR. Now, out of the Fat Shark HDOs and the Eosheen, I would say the Eosheen's DVR was closest to how I was seeing it through my goggles. But again, the DVR is not doing it justice as to how I was actually seeing it. It was actually really, really nice. All right, so other than that, let's just go ahead and test this latency. Hopefully, it has some pretty remarkable latency. It is using a CMOS sensor inside. So let me prepare everything and let's get our first tests done. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first sample. We got two milliseconds. So I didn't. I usually don't like to show you the first sample, just making sure everything's working. So here we're taking another sample. Now, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the video feed up top. This is when, and the bottom here is when the LED turns on. So as you can tell, the line is low, and then when it goes high, that means the LED just turned on at that point, right at the center of the screen. And this is the video feed. As you can tell, it's all black, 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 black. Boom, there's the LED. So we, we, just, we see the difference between when the LED turned on and when the camera registered it. And we take a look at this variable here or this number right here. And that gives us the exact latency of the camera. And currently 1.94 milliseconds on the LED turning on. Now, the LED turning off, usually most cameras experience a bit more latency. So first, let's get around 5 to 10 samples of the LED turning on here. And I think you're gonna be quite surprised. Look at this, 1.94 milliseconds. Again, just gotta wait for this one. Okay, so this is a really rare case. Now check this out. You're not gonna see this again. This is a 2.7 millisecond latency, but in reality, it's still two milliseconds. And let me tell you why. Because these in here, these are the pre-equalization pulses right in there. It starts, let me show you. So it would start from here, where the yellow line is, and it'll end right here. These are, every single camera, these are to sync in the camera. So uh, if we were just to turn on the LED just slightly more, we would have actually caught a glimpse of it right before the pre-equalization pulses. This is the most latency this thing will ever get when the LED is turning on, which is something really remarkable. You're talking about 2.7 milliseconds. Now, every single test I'm gonna take right after this is around two milliseconds. It's it's remarkable how consistent. Look, there's another test. And this was what was with half of the pre-equalization pulse where it turned on on that one. And here we go. Now here you might think it's faster, but it's actually not because what you want to look at is you want to look at the red line. So red line is down here. These are little. I don't, I don't know. I'm seeing them a lot with wide dynamic range cameras, but you want to ignore that. The first part, you want to see where the red red line started to appear. That's where the latency is, and it is still 1.2, 1.9 six zero milliseconds and again it's between 1.94 milliseconds and two milliseconds always it is insanely consistent with the led turning on not only the video quality is absolutely out of this world even the latency is just out of this freaking world now let's see what the led actually turning off so let's go ahead and take a sample here come on sample oh i had to change my uh just the place of the trigger level there we go i think that should do it 
Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so always, when the LED turns off, I always see the most amount of latency. Maybe because of the wide dynamic range, it's still adjusting, or something of that nature. And as you can tell here, I would say it actually noticed it right about here, but to officially drop to like full-blown darkness was right in this area right there, as you can tell. And that is what, 3.42 milliseconds. Now, in the LED turning off, like I mentioned, it's always more latency for some reason. But look how consistent this thing is. Every single time. This time's actually even faster, but we, yeah, it's, I think I would say it's faster, but we can't calculate it from right here, as you can tell. And what, why? You might say, why is that? Forget this little peak right here. This is from the wide dynamic range. And you might say, well, why can't we calculate it from here? Because it's a pre-equalization pulses. Uh, this is like to sync in the frame, and it's not really video data, basically. So here, we're going to say 2.92 milliseconds. It's official latency when it's turning off. And then we're going to take another sample. And then here, we have, again... 3.42 milliseconds. It's it's just insanely consistent. It will not pass 3.5 milliseconds on turning off. And on, on the LED turning on, it is 2 milliseconds. So it's safe to say around, we could say like a, a stable 2 to a 3 millisecond latency on this camera. Remarkable. There isn't this weird fluctuation that happens. Like with the other cameras that I've been testing, it, it's actually really, really nice here. We can get a little bit more resolution here for us, so as you can tell. It's always good. I mean, it's always consistent. I never have to re-measure again. I rarely ever do. And this is the first time that I've ever tested a camera that was this consistent. Um, so overall, this camera is really good. Um, I don't know what else to say, guys. I mean, here's the data for you. Um, yeah, there you go. This is the fastest camera on the planet. I truly believe so. And I don't think there's going to be anything else that's faster. I think the only thing is going to be something to match it. But... This is remarkable. For 30 bucks, this is crazy. But there is other cameras that I have received also, which I will be latency testing as well. That's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of cameras that are going to be latency tested on the channel. Uh, so I do have a couple more cameras, but holy crap, I've never tested a camera like this. I can tell you that right now. And this was an absolute surprise to me. Um, yeah, so overall, it's hella fast. It's really fast, actually. One of the fastest cameras, if not the fastest camera. All right, guys, so let's, let me go ahead and just remove everything off the table here. And... Uh, Let's take one last look at it, and we'll take it from there. All right, guys, so my overall opinions and thoughts about this camera. I think it's a shame that I have left it on a wing because of its latency. I've never tested anything with that kind of latency. The closest thing ever was the Cadex camera, but not a lot of people liked that one because it was like kind of washing out when you look into the sun. But this one gives you the perfect balance between quality and latency. It's actually remarkable. You're getting 1,000 TVL lines, very good color, very good wide dynamic range, and just very consistent latency. I've never seen a camera like this. I do have more FXC cameras in the shop, so I'll be testing those in the upcoming days. I'll be surprised if uh, I find anything faster. I think this is going to be like a benchmark for a lot of the cameras out there. And if we don't hit something as fast as this one, we'll take it apart and see what kind of, uh, hopefully we can see what kind of uh, sensor they're using for the camera and some of the other electronics on the insides here. But other than that, it's a really great camera. It's one of the fastest cameras I've tested with the greatest quality I've seen. And um, yeah, it's a really good one, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If I did help you make a purchase or avoid a purchase, please consider joining my Patreon and or using the links down below. Those greatly support the channel. And well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.